Hello, I'm Shakib Muhammad, and I, I'm presenting the highlights of our study on the symptomatic treatment of children with anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis that was published recently in Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology. Pediatric neurologists have increasingly become aware of the entity of anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis and its immune responsiveness since its first description in 2007. Even though there is an increasingly refined framework for the approach to immune therapy of this condition, even today, all of us grapple with the day-to-day -day symptomatic management of these children. In our study, 27 children from two large referral hospitals in Sydney and Auckland had a mean hospital admission of nearly 70 days, some admitted for more than six months. The very fact that an average of eight symptomatic medications were used per patient highlights the complexity of managing these patients, but also underscores the modest benefit from many such drug trials. However, our observations, though retrospective and limited to two centers, have highlighted some key aspects that might help refine the care of these children in the future. We found that classic movement disorder medications like levodopa were not very efficacious, though anticholinergics did help, particularly with drug-induced dystonia. There was a very clear high rate of adverse effects with the use of various antipsychotics, limiting their median use to nine days, therefore indicating that the risk-benefit ratio of their use in this condition merits serious consideration. Long-acting benzodiazepines such as clobazam and sedatives like chloral hydrate and clonidine were often the mainstay of treatment and could help with multiple symptoms. The same applies to the choice of anticonvulsants, which can potentially be chosen to benefit movement disorders and behavioral or psychiatric manifestations in addition to or exclusive to their use for seizure control. One of our interesting observations was the from the demographics was the high proportion of non-white patients, particularly Pacific Islanders, affected by anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis in our region, perhaps suggesting an inherent vulnerability similar to other autoimmune disorders. If anything, our study highlights the need to carefully tailor therapy to try and use polypharmacy very judicious, judiciously in this condition and to constantly question whether all symptoms need to be eliminated completely in a condition that will ultimately respond to immune therapy in most patients and also to be cautious with the use of antipsychotics. Thank you for your listening.